How many of you have heard that before? Money doesn't grow on trees, right? Rich people are there because they're crooks. They stole it, right? Okay, I'm just, I'm just telling you. But now here's how that shows up in your business because this is real stuff. I had a lady just in Aurora, Illinois, outside of Chicago. She grew a very successful business. She was earning $1,000 a week, part-time. And then all of a sudden she started doing crazy stuff with her downline. And I just went, what is she doing? And so we got on the phone and I said, Darling, what's going on? She said, I don't know. No one wants to work. No one wants to. And so as we got into it, here's the deal. She grew up in a house and her dad said you had to work hard for every penny you got. And she had built a great organization, but was she really working hard? In her mind, she wasn't. So guess what? She didn't feel like she deserved to get that $1,000 a week. All because of something that was taught when she was a kid. Does that make sense? And that's why we're addressing this, because this is where it shows up in the business. When you get to go out and start talking to people. That's when all that stuff's going to show up. Because they're going to be going, no, no, no. And as a leader, you have to understand that, because guess what? Rebecca's going to get in the business, she's going to be excited, and she's going to go out and she's going to talk to her Uncle Jojo, and Uncle Jojo's going to say, didn't we send you to college? Don't you have a degree? You, you were the smart one, and you got involved in one of those. Can you get your money back? <laughs> right? And then she's going to go to Aunt Josie, and Aunt Josie goes, did you know your Uncle Bubba got involved in one of those things? And lost all his money. Girl, you're the smart one. Can you get your money back? Those things don't work. I'm not interested. Can't cheat me. Right? And before you know it, guess what, Rebecca? This doesn't work for you. It doesn't work. I can't do it. I'm out. Right? She walks away. Why? Because in here... What happened? Everything from her past came flooding back in. All the negativity that she heard from Miss Brown's class, her friends, everybody comes flooding in. And it steals her dream. Does that make sense, folks? And I tell you this because I had to overcome those same things. Does that make sense? And so I know it's a process for all of us. But until we address it, we won't be able to liberate ourselves and lead others to freedom. Does that make sense? Okay. So, principle number one. He or she who speaks to the most people wins. Principle number two goes along with it. At this juncture in your business, sponsorship is the lifeblood of your business. Sponsorship is the lifeblood of your business. What do I mean by that? You must be talking to a lot of people and sponsoring. And you don't stop sponsoring in your business until you have doubled your goal from an income perspective. Let's write that down. You don't stop sponsoring until you have doubled your goal from an income perspective. Because here's what happens. We get some people in the business and all of a sudden, instead of being builders, we become managers. Okay? Now we want to manage everybody. See what everybody else is doing. And we're going to talk a little bit about leadership later on today. And you're going to understand why that should not happen for you. Okay? Because I'll just say this. The team will always move to the speed of the leader. The team will always move to the speed of the leader. So if I want my team to grow by ones and twos, then I should probably be sponsoring ones and twos. If I want my team to grow by fives and tens, then I could probably be sponsoring fives and tens. Does 
that make sense? Here's why that happens that way. It's because your team sees you as an example of what's possible in the business. Does that make sense? As a leader, you become the possibility of what's in the business. And I'll share with you really quickly how that affected me. One of the companies I was in was a dual juice company. And I was working with a guy, he's definitely the top income earner there. And we had set up a deal in Asia. And I was going to place a leader underneath him. He was going to put him in my downline, but he was going to sponsor him because the guy needed some financial support to market and so forth. And so I needed to put the guy in the business. And so he didn't have time to do it, so he gave me access to his back office. I confess, curiosity killed the cat because I definitely wanted to find out what he was making. And I went into his back office, and that particular week, he was going to get a check for $150,000. And all of a sudden, my vision of what was possible in this industry changed dramatically. Does that make sense? He opened my eyes to what was possible. See, I was thinking small. I was thinking, you know, I'm okay with 10000 maybe 15000 a week. I'm okay. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I go, wow, that's like drug money, man. <laughs> <laughs> right, 150000 a week? Hey, sign me up. <laughs> but my vision changed. Does that make sense? And so that's what happens for your team. Okay. For example, let me just see how many of you in the next month will be classified as a founder three. And you've done it in less than about 30 days. Okay? Let's give them a hand. Now, here's why that's important. Guess what you just told everybody that joined your team? In 30 days, it's possible to be a founder three and to get to the $600 club. Does that make sense? Okay, how many of you have hit founder four? We'll hit founder four next month. Look at that. Let's give them a hand. Any founder fives? Mandy? Founder sixes. Okay, founder sevens. I think Brian will probably be a founder six. Yes, yeah, seven. Yeah, he's close to six it's or like, seven. I'm kind of teetering, and he's teetering, so I'm, I'm saying for sure founder five. You see, guys, you see what what happens now is they've set the standard of what's possible. Does that make sense? First company I ever built. We had the fastest growing company from night. From 1999 to 2003, I had at least 10 members of my team that were in the top 10 sponsors worldwide in that company. Here's why. Me and a buddy of mine had an internal competition just between us. And this is where I learned this concept. And we were sponsoring as many as we could. And one month, we both sponsored about 25 people. Okay. All of a sudden, guess what started happening in our team? Our team members started sponsoring 15, 20, 25 people. I was like, wow, man, these guys have been doing onesie twosies. What happened, right? <laughs> well, guess what? We changed their vision of what was possible. Does that make sense? And so I want to applaud those of you that are leading the way and showing the people that have come to follow what's possible. Because Kobe was right, that $600 a month changes people's lives. It takes them from drowning to at least above water. And so now they're above water, they can breathe, and they're not in that state of desperation anymore. Does that make sense? And now they can make sound, rational decisions about how to move forward in their life and how this business will play a role. Does that make sense? Does that bring everything full circle for you? Okay, those are the first two principles I always teach people about this industry. 
I spent quite a bit more time with clearing out the cobwebs and the garbage. Because you know what? Guys, well-meaning people, they, they, they didn't mean to harm us at all. But you know what? They dumped garbage in our bucket. They dumped a lot of it. Does that make sense? And now that we're adults, guess what? We get to decide whether or not we want to keep that garbage in or we want to dump it out. And I recommend that you dump it out. And as you dump it out, you will liberate yourself. And I really believe what happens when we liberate ourselves, our authentic self shows up. Who we really are. Because there's a trick played on all of us. Our families and our friends put us in a box. And most of us play the role of the person in the box. But somewhere deep inside, we're not the person in the box. Does that make sense? I have five kids. And they love Disney. When they were smaller, the biggest Disney movie they would watch was The Lion King. And they loved The Lion King. I know everything about The Lion King, let me tell you. But there's one portion in The Lion King I think that applies to all of us. And you remember Simba, right? Treks across the savanna, they find him, he finds Timba and Timon and Pumba, right? Timon and Pumba, right? And they're a Kuna Matata, right? And they're living there and they're having this great day. And then the winds blow across the savanna and then it arrives at the house of old Rafiki, right? <laughs> and old Rafiki's drawing, and what does he draw on that picture of the lion? The lion has now, the cub has now become a lion, right? And it's Simba. So off across the savanna he goes. And he finds Simba hanging out in the oasis, right, with his friends, Akuna Matata, eating worms, right? <laughs> this is the king of the jungle, right? And he walks up to Simba, and Simba is looking at him. And Simba goes, who are you? He says, a better question is, who are you? And he says, I know who you are. You're Mufasa's boy. And so he goes, I hate to tell you, he's dead. And he's alive. He goes, huh? Oh, I'll show him to you. And the story says that he leads Simba to a reflecting pool. And he has Simba look into this reflecting pool. And Simba looks in and goes, well, it's just my reflection. He says, Simba, look harder. And it says, miraculously, the ghost of Mufasa appears to his son. And he says, Simba, you're more than what you have become. That was a defining moment for Simba. I believe in each of us, there's that voice saying, I deserve better than what I've got. I have yet to reach my greatness. Make this your moment that you decide to live life on your terms and reach your greatness because the world needs you to do so. And we know the story of Simba. He changes. Mala comes. He heads back to Pride Rock and he takes his rightful place as king. And I believe we all have our own rightful place. And within our heart of hearts, we know what that is. I can't tell you what that is. But inside you, you know what it is. Because each and every night, when you're taking off the makeup, ladies, guys, when you're brushing your teeth and getting ready for bed, and you look in the mirror and you look over the course of your life, I truly believe that within your heart of hearts you say, I can do more. I deserve more. And you're right. You do. But in order for that to happen, you must take control and you must move forward. I want to thank you. Now, why is it important to become a product of the product? Yeah. So, you know what you're talking about. so you know what you're talking about. Credibility. You get to be able to share your experience. Share your experience. More confident in what you're talking about. More confident in what you're talking about. Be your own testimonial. Be your own testimonial. Anybody else? They got it. Know the value of what we get or what we're offering people.
When you become a product of the product, folks, it builds this. Belief. Why is that important? That's what creates action. Motivation. That's what creates action. Here's, 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 let me, let me share something with you. How many of you went to school, college? Why did you go to college? Because you had to. Huh? They told you to, right? Anybody else? You felt the urge because that's what you needed to do to succeed? And everybody thought if they went to college, after college, they'd be able to get what? A job. Okay? So what got you up every morning when you didn't want to get up and go to that class? At the end of the day, to get the piece of paper that would give you a job. So your belief in that system, right, caused you to take certain behavior or actions. Does that make sense? Your belief system is a guidance system for you. Nothing that you have done thus far in your life has been contrary, for the most part, to your belief system. Because just like, sorry, Victor said, right behind belief is action or behavior. Does that make sense? So the reason you become a product of the product is because once you experience the product, what happens to your belief? about the product. Does it go up or down? Hopefully it goes up. You had a good experience, right? And that's important for you. Why? Because when you now talk to people, you talk from a place of confidence. See, how many of us have strong beliefs about certain things? And when people challenge that belief, what do we do? We stand up for it, don't we? Because we have a conviction to our beliefs. And in network marketing, folks, there are the 2,000 plus network marketing companies that come into existence every year. And there's 2,000 that leave. And you happen to be a part of one. So you have to have a belief and a conviction that the products and services that you're offering are of such a nature and a quality that people deserve to pay $99.95 for. Does that make sense? If I don't believe that, if I haven't had that experience, here's what happens. Hey, man, I'm involved in this company called Wake Up Now. They've got all these electronic technological tools that can help you save money, manage your money, and make money. And it's only $99.95 a month. And guess what he says? What do I get for that? Well, you get a financial software that's going to help you track your finances and create a roadmap to debt reduction. You're going to also get a tax program that's going to allow you to save money on your taxes. It's a software program. And you also get to go shop on the Internet. We have a marketplace where you can get discounts and cash back. And guess what he says? Well, I got, I, is it like Mint.com? Well, it's Similar to Mint, just on steroids. But Mint is free. All right? Oh, okay. The tax thing. Well, what good is that going to do me? I'm an employee. All right? And so these discounts on the Internet, what are the, what's that all about? Is it something I can go and shop on the Internet and find? Or is it something unique to you? Help me understand. It is unique. How is it unique, sir? Well, it's unique because not everybody has a chance to share it. On the internet, anybody can have access to it. Discounts are deeper and the opportunities are greater. Discounts are deeper, opportunities are greater. And you know what? Let us not forget that little word called convenience. Why do we have 7 Elevens on the corner? Convenience. Convenience stores. Does that make sense? <laughs> Are people willing to pay for convenience? Oh, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Does that make sense? So today, I want you to understand the value of the product that we have. One of the principles you're going to want to learn, and we'll do this at another time, is how to visualize the life you want to live. You know, Jim Rohn said something interesting. He says, from... 
personal experience, from testimonials and personal experience, we have enough evidence to conclude that it's possible to design and live an extraordinary life. When I was a young boy in high school, I read a book by Leo Buscali called Living, Loving, and Learning. In that book, Leo says this. He says, you and I are the master painters of our lives. If we don't like the scenery, we can erase the canvas and paint a new one. You and I have the ability to change our lives at any given moment. And what Mandy shared with you is a key that will unlock a door. You see, she's almost been 10 years ago, actually longer than that, 13 years ago. I was on a Saturday morning call. I was a leader in network marketing. And I was talking to my group, and we were talking about visualization. And I said, you know what? I had a dream. And in that dream, I saw a house. And what the house was is on the side of a mountain overlooking the valley. I could see all the way to the lake. And then my wife and I decided we wanted to move. She actually came to me and said, we need to go to another place. I want to move out of the neighborhood, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we'll go, we'll go shopping. So we go and we find this house. And she actually found it. She liked it because it had a putting green in the basement, and I'm a golfer. And so she said, this will be great for you. You'll be home, right? <laughs> so guess what, though? When I'm in my office, guess what I see? The valley to the lake. When I'm upstairs on the deck, and I walk out of my deck, guess what I see? The valley all the way to the lake. Why? Because I saw it before it ever showed up. That's what she means when she says, seeing is believing. Sometimes we can't see it, but you know what? If we look at it long enough on the mirror and we read it and we begin to internalize it, it becomes real. Does that make sense? It becomes real because now we may not feel deep down that we, we can do it, but it becomes possible. And it's finding power in the possibility of what can become. Does that make sense? And that's what she's talking about. She talked about reading, right? Jim Rohn said this. He said, work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Because, folks, you are your own commodity. Does that make sense? You increase your value by increasing your knowledge. Does that make sense? And when you, the marketplace pays for only one thing, and that's called value. See, when Jim was a young guy, he had a mentor. His name was Earl Show. And one day Jim was talking to him, and he was complaining that the plant that he worked at didn't pay enough. And he says, well, what do you mean? He says, well, look at my checks. This is all they pay. He says, no, that's not all they pay. That's just all they pay you. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, wow, that was a novel idea. He says, let me ask you a question. He says, Jim, do they have a president at that company? Yeah, does he make more money than you? Yeah. Do they have a vice president of the company? Yeah. Does he make more money than you? Yeah. So then that means that this is all they pay you. <laughs> so they do pay more money, but they only pay for value. And that's what I love about network marketing. Network marketing pays you for the value you bring to the marketplace. People will come and get involved in your business because they perceive that you will provide them value that will allow them to reach their goals and dreams. Does that make sense? And so you have to invest in you so that you can in turn invest in them. Because they're going to expect that. 
Now, step two, we talked about being a product of the product, right? Mandy talked about your why, that belief system. Put it on your mirror. Read it in the morning. Read it at night and do it out loud. And one day we'll spend some time on this process of creation. Okay? Because you and I are creators by the nature of who we are. But our creation starts with what we think. And our, if we think something long enough, it becomes what we call a belief. Does that make sense? And that which we believe, we've already discussed, makes us do what? Act. Act. And consistent actions we call habits. And those habits then further reveal, reveal what? Results. So if I want to change my results in life, I must come to the first step of creation and change how I think. Because that in turn will change my belief system, that will change my behaviors, that will deliver to me a different result. Mandy mentioned, if you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to keep getting what you always got, right? Einstein said it this way. He says, to continue to do the same thing over and over again and expect different results, he had a name for you. It's called insane. He said, that's insanity. Jim Rohn put it very simply. He said, for things to change, you must change. For things to get better, you must get better. Notice it's all focused on. And so one of the things that you have to do as you go through this self-discovery process is create your who am I statement. And that's important for me. This is, this is off of network marketing, but I think this grounds you. And then I want to recommend that you put it in your wallet and you carry it with you. So when you're out and about and you forget who you are, you can pull it out and you can refer to it. And I'm just going to share with you, if you don't mind briefly, my who am I. I am a son of God created in his likeness and image. He has endowed me with his characteristics and attributes, my divine nature. I am a joint heir with Christ if I so live to merit such a position among my father's children. I can achieve this by doing what he's asked me to do, keep his commandments. As a son of God, I create the world which surrounds me daily. I choose to create daily a life of abundance, prosperity, and joy. My father promises that whatsoever I ask him, believing, he will give to me. What appears is the results of my asking. It reminds me grounds me. Because, remember we talked earlier, people put us in the box. And we're not really in the box. But we have to discover our authentic self. Some of us give our authentic self and we play a role. We say, well, I'm just a mommy. No, that's a role you play. <coughs> well, I'm just so-and-so's wife. Once again, that's just a role you play. I'm a teacher. That's your career. So you have to dig deeper to find that authentic person because they're there. And when you show up, I promise you, the people that resonate with your message will come in droves. I've had the privilege of building several organizations in this industry. Um, and people say, how did you do it? And then I tell them people showed up. And they go, huh? <laughs> Folks, when you become centered in you, we talked about the lighthouse earlier today. I promise you this. People will begin to show up. And they'll show up because you've become attractive. Okay. Jim Rohn said something interesting. He said, we don't chase or pursue success. We attract it by becoming attractive. A friend of mine shared with me once, he says, my success is an open book test. The challenge is, is most of us never open the book. See, when successful people become successful, you know what the first thing they do? They write a book and tell you how they did it. Does that make sense? But if we never read the book, we can never know the path. Because if 1 plus 1 equals 2 for Johnny, what do I know about that same mathematical equation? 
one plus one will equal two for me. Right? We talk about network marketing being a business of duplication. Right? If Mandy says, look, I did this, 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 and this, and this is what it yielded, then what does that mean? If you do this, 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 what is it going to yield? The same result. I, I tell people at the simplicity of this industry is a monkey see, monkey do business. Right? And you know what? It's a way that we've always learned. I don't know, for you older folks like me that have kids, my last child learned to walk much faster than my first one. Why? Because everybody else in the house was running around on two legs. As you go, scooting around on my behind, not getting it. I can't keep up, so guess what? She got up earlier and started doing this. Right? Because that's what everybody else was doing. Does that make sense? Same thing in this business. Okay? Now, the building strategy is very simple. B3H3G3. Bring three, help three, get three. Focus on the H. Focus on the H. If you will do that, you'll win. And sometimes that's hard. Sure, we're talking about desperate people earlier. And here's the thing that happens in desperate people. It's difficult for them when they get involved in the business to focus on the other person. Because they make the business all about them. Boy, if I sign you up, I get this much money. If I sign you up. And so everybody has a dollar sign on them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And guys, this is, this is a tough one. Because you got in the business to do what? Make money. Right? But the way to wealth is finding a way to serve the masses. Does that make sense? See, the master teacher said, the greatest among you will be servant of all. Right? He'll be servant of all. He'll be servant. He'll be serving the masses. So the road to prosperity and wealth is by what? Serving other people. See, Zig Ziglar put it this way. He said, if you help enough people get what they want out of life, you'll get everything that you want. He didn't say some of the things. He said everything. But guess what? It wasn't focusing on me. It was focusing on them. That's it. That makes sense. So what you have to learn to do is that, that internal thing is going to come in. It's going to show up. It's going to be the end of the month. And you're going to be so excited. And you're going to be this close to hitting that next rank. And you're going to be pushing, you're going to be pushing, you're going to be thinking about people who you can talk to, and you're going to have your list together. And I'm going to tell you to stop. Step back and say this. Who can I serve? Who can I help by bringing into this business, bringing them into this business? Does that make sense? Different approach now. And you'll watch. The names will come the people will show up. How does it happen? Guys, I don't know. All I know is it happens. And so when people say, how did you grow this business? I said, people showed up. They just began to show up. So, watch out for that. And I, I just, it's, it's that word of selfishness. That's the word, really. Be selfless. In your giving, and you will build an empire. So, when I'm talking to people, what do we do? Well, there's certain things that you have to do. You have to present the business, right? I call the first thing I want to share with you the presentation triangle. Okay? When you first get started in the business, guys, you don't know everything about the business. So, there's a presentation triangle. Okay? Top, you got your prospect, 
Over here you've got you, and over here you've got your resident expert. Okay? Now, write this down. Principle. No man or woman is a prophet in their own land. Okay? Why? Because our friends have us in a box. They see us as the box. Right? So let's say I'm in the medical field, and now I'm going to talk to my friends about doing business. And they go, dude, you're medical. What do you know about network marketing or home-based business? You know, you go to work every day, and you look at computers. You, whatever it is you do, you, you tap on knees, right? That's all you do. Why? Because they see you only in the box. But do, the, do you have credibility with them? Yes. Do they trust you? Absolutely, because you have a relationship. Does that make sense? So, don't be the deliverer of the message. You're going to be nothing more than an usher. See, I grew up a little Baptist boy. And so in the Baptist church, when you came in, there was ushers. One would greet you at the door, they'd look around, and they would direct you to one that was up front that would put you in your seat. Does that make sense? And then the pastor would come out and he'd preach a sermon. Okay, so you are nothing more than an usher. Your job is to usher your prospects, those family and friend members that you're sharing the opportunity with, to the preacher. The preacher is your resident expert. Okay? So what is the resident expert going to do? He is going to give the presentation, or she is going to give the presentation for you. What happens? Well, the prospect already trusts you. You already have credibility with them. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to, this word, you want to write it down, you're going to edify your experts. You're going to talk about whatever they've done successful in their life, how they've, how they've been successful in the business, and that they've taken time out of their busy schedule to meet with them. Okay? And then you're going to turn it over to your expert. As soon as you do that, your job is done. So guess what that means? Shut you up. now shut up. <laughs> you don't say another word. Here's why. Who's the expert? They are. It's not a time to ask questions. It's not a time to say, did you remember to tell them about this? Why don't you tell them about this? They're the expert. Your job is to sit, smile, and nod. <laughs> okay? Because the moment that you open your mouth while the expert's talking, guess what you just did? It took away his credibility. You killed their entire credibility because now you're trying to tell the expert how to present the business. See, I used to have to do three-way calls. And then one of my leaders now, from one of my old companies, just joined Wake Up Now. And I was doing a training back in New York. And we are talking about this. And midway through my presentation, he just starts cracking up. And I go, Mike, why are you laughing, dude? He goes, now I know. I said, said what? He says, you did a three-way call with me, and I interrupted you, and then when I came back, you were gone. And I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, maybe his phone dropped. And then I kept calling you, and there was no answer. And I said, did you get the message? <laughs> If you invite me as an expert and you talk, I will no longer talk. If we're doing a three-way call, I will no longer be there. Because you invited me to help you as an expert. And when you talk, you take away my ability to do that. So then you waste your time, my time, and the prospect's time. Does that make sense? So make sure that when you're presenting the business, you follow that. Now, how do we get people to our expert? Right? Well, first of all, they should know what it's about. 
You don't call the expert and say, hey, I've got Tommy on the line and he's excited. Well, what does Tommy know about the business? Nothing. You've got to tell him. Okay, that's not the way to use your expert. Okay? So, how many of you guys saw these wonderful things in the back? These DVDs. Everybody should have gotten at least one, right? Okay. That guy got involved in this business, and I'm so excited about it. I'd like to share it with you. I'm going to give you this DVD. Do you think you'll have an opportunity to watch it? Uh, yeah, sometime. Sometime? Yeah. You know what? I really appreciate it, but I can't give it to you. I'm looking for people that are committed to watch it. Why? Well, <laughs> okay. You, you, if you watch it tonight, when are you going to watch it? Um, eight. Eight o'clock? Eight o'clock? Great. You know what I'd like to do after you've had a chance to watch it? I want to get with you with a good friend of mine that's doing the same business with me, and they're my business partner, and they've been killing it. I mean, they've been very successful, and I think that you need to hear what they have to say. Okay? Then what happened? Emergency. But what happened first? She was lukewarm, and then what did I do? No, no, I, I, I said, hey, maybe it's not for you. Does that make sense? And then all of a sudden, guess what? Wait a second. Here's something interesting. When you're prospecting, remember this. He who asks the questions controls the conversation. You are not begging anyone to get involved with you in this business. If you had a million dollars and you offered it to a friend, how long would you leave it out there if they kept saying, I don't know? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You're offering people a way to freedom, to change their life. You don't beg them to do that. What they call that in the industry, they call it posture. And your posture comes from your belief in what it is that you're offering them. If you don't believe that you're offering them something of value, then this is how it goes. How are you doing? I'm involved in this business. It's called Waking Now. And, well, every, a lot of people are having success, and, and I was wondering maybe if you'd be interested in taking a look. I have this DVD that I, I, I want to give to you. Would you take it and, and watch it? Uh, yeah, probably. Maybe. Do you think he's going to watch it? No. no. But I'll give it to him, and I'll go, I gave the DVD away. <laughs> and then we'll go, maybe I keep calling, but he hasn't watched it. What do I do? Does that make sense? People are looking for leadership. People are looking for people that know where they want to go. Because most of the world is still asleep. They're wandering. They've fallen into the trap of go to school, get good grades, get an education, go to school, and work out for the next 60 years of your life to end up broke. Who's buying into that program? Everybody. Everybody. So that means they're asleep. Does that make sense? Because if you asked them when they were 20 years old and they're 18 years old, guess what? They're going to retire rich. And when we were kids, we could become anything that we wanted to become. And then along the way, the pathway of life, people kept telling us what we couldn't do, what we can't do. We can't do this. You can't do that. You can't. That's not realistic. You got to do something more practical. Become a lawyer. I say that because I went to law school. <laughs> <laughs> and the day I passed the bar and walked away, they said I was crazy. But you know what? No one says that today. I'll never forget when I got involved in network marketing and I met with my dad. I was just starting out, and we were making okay money. And my dad was like, you know what? You can still go back to law. And then a year from that day, my dad and I sat down, and I shared with him what I was making in this industry. And my dad had since retired. And when we were having that conversation, he was trying to put his life in order. Something about retirement and putting your life in order and putting your will. And I was, he was making me the... 
uh, the executor of his estate, and, and I looked at what my dad had accumulated after 33 years of working for the same chemical company in his pension fund, and I made that one year my own marketing business. And I realized my dad had worked for peanuts. Gave 33 years of his life. that point on, my dad was like, this network marketing thing's pretty good. <laughs> but more and more people need to be awakened. And you become that instrument. So you have to be confident. We talked about belief, yeah? That's why we had you talk about the product. So that you, and you have to become a product of the product. Why? So that you can have the confidence and the commitment, right? And the courage to say, hey, this is the right way. Oh, you don't, you're not sure? You know what? I really appreciate your time. It's probably not for you. Does that make sense? And be willing to walk away. Write that down. Because that's something that be willing to walk away. You have to always be willing to walk away from the deal. Because if you're not willing to walk away, you give all the power to that other person. Because now they control you by the decision they make. And you know what? It's got to be, I don't care if you come in, if you don't. I'm trying to help you. Does that make sense? And if you'll do that, I'm not saying be obnoxious or be rude, but if you will stand firm in your conviction that you're giving them something of tremendous value, more people than not will accept the invitation. And that is all we can ask them to do, <coughs> is to come and look. And one of the guys in the East Coast does this. Picks up the phone and he calls his friends. And he says, Sherry, I'm in this new project and I'm in it to win it. Can I get 15 minutes of your life? That's the question he asks. And then he says this. He says, if you're a friend and they can't give you 15 minutes of their life, take them off your friendship page. <laughs> Does that make sense? So then he says, okay, great. They say, yes, I'm interested. He says, okay, when can I come to your house? Doesn't send them an email. Doesn't try to explain it over the phone. He goes to their house with his handy DVD. He says, let's go to your computer, puts the DVD in, turns his cell phone off, and they watch together. And at the end of that, he says, wasn't that awesome? And I want you to join me, because I'm going to do it with or without you but I'd love to have you to come along for the journey. You in? And you know what most of them say? Absolutely. Why? Because he's committed. People are looking for what? Leadership. And when he does that, he's telling them, listen, I'm going. Does that make sense? And what did he have to do? He stuck in the DVD and he pressed play. <laughs> is that difficult? Can we do that? Is, is, that, is, something, is that duplicatable? Okay. Can we teach that? Monkey see, monkey do, right? Okay, we can do that one. All right? All it is, is a DVD. Okay. Any questions before we move to the next section? We good on that? Okay. You can do three on ones, two on ones. You can do three way calls. You can do large group meetings. What I want to talk to you really quickly about is the one on one presentation. In your handouts, you've got something called a napkin presentation. So, little thing, it's got four boxes on it. Okay, with that napkin presentation, we do this. Blue, blue boxes, yep. 
what are you calling it like? Napkin presentation. Napkin. 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 <clears throat> It's your Southern Baptist thing. It's a great book. Huh? Yeah, Lincoln wrote the Gettysburg Address on a napkin. Yes, Lincoln wrote the Gettysburg Address on a napkin. Yeah. So, you should be able to tell your business by making a drawing on a napkin. So, here we go. How many of you buy groceries on a monthly basis? How many of you have a cell phone bill? Check. How many of you eat out of restaurants on a monthly basis? Check. How many of you buy clothes for the kids on a monthly basis for yourself? Check. How would you like to continue to do those things just for less? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Everybody signs up for that program, right? Well, let me just tell you about this company I'm involved in. It's called Wake Up Now. We're a financial wellness company. What we do is we help people save money on the things that they buy each and every day. Let's say you're spending $1,000 a month on those things, right? Clothes, eating out at restaurants, cell phone bill, all groceries, right? So you spend $1,000. Our goal and objective is we're going to carve out three to $400 off of that bill, okay? We have a little saying here at Wake Up Now. Saving money is making money. Okay? Where well, you once were spending a thousand, you're now only spending how much? Seven hundred, right? So that means you now have three hundred dollars extra at the end of the month. Does that make sense? So then what we teach you to do is don't take that three hundred and buy more stuff. We want you to take that three hundred and we want you to apply it to your consumer debt. Now, whether that's credit card debt, that's a car loan, that's a mortgage on a house, or that's a student loan, whatever that debt happens to be. Okay? Now, when you make an additional $300 a month payment on your debt, what happens to the debt? You pay it off faster or slower? Less. You pay it off faster, right? What happens to your interest? You pay more interest or less interest? Less. less interest. So I've done two things for you. I've saved you on your spending, right? And I've also now just saved you on your interest. Does that make sense? Then what we do is we put you in your own home-based business, now, there's 450 potential tax deductions that you have at your disposal. Does that make sense? Now, on average, you're going to save yourself anywhere from $9,000 to $11,000 annually in taxes. So now what have I done for you? I've saved you on your spending, I've saved you on your interest, and I've now saved you on your taxes. Are those all good things for you? Yes. Okay, there's only a couple of ways to get wealthy in America. Learn to live on less than what you make. That's just what I just did for you. And find a way to make more money. And then we talk about the compensation plan. How long do you think that takes? 10 to 15 minutes, maximum. Does that make sense? So what are the three things? We save you on your spending. We save you on your interest. We save you on your taxes. And then we show you how to make more money. That's wake up now. Does that make sense? Yes. So if you happen to be with someone and you don't have a DVD with you, they want to know about the business, so it's a one-on-one -on -one presentation, you can pull out a piece of napkin, you can draw that out, and you can draw the lines out on the business, right? $99.95, you get started. As soon as you bring your first three in, you get a $100 bonus. So we like to say it's three and it's free. Does that make sense? Then you help those three people go get their three. That's a total of 12. When you do that, we now pay you $600 a month reoccurring residual income. The reason that number 600 is important to us is because if you go out and you look at most financial advisors, they'll tell you 80-plus percent of the people that file bankrupts in America, had they had an additional $500 in positive cash flow, they would have never filed. They were just that close to the edge. So we take them from drowning to breathing. Now they can begin to change their life. They go, well, it's only 500 bucks. Well, does anyone know what the value of $500 is? Yeah. What's the value? That's my car payment and my insurance and my cell phone. That's his car payment, insurance, and cell phone bill for him. For each person, it will be different. But guess what? If you take and you say, okay, how much money do I need to have in a savings account without and just living on interest only? How much money would I have to have it, it generate for me, free and clear, not touching my principal, $500 a month? million bucks. I don't know if it's quite a million. No. 300,000. 
roughly about three, four hundred thousand dollars in the bank. That's what that five hundred dollars a month is worth. Does that make sense? Because it's residual. It's the nature of the income. Okay. So how long? That's the whole presentation. How long did it take? Less than ten minutes. Can you do that? So if you can do that, you can present the business. Because remember we talked about network marketing being pretty simple, right? It's about doing what? Talking to other people about the business. So now I just told you how to talk to them about the business. Principle number one, you guys remember what we said early on? He or she who? Talks to most people. Wins. Right? So if I'm not talking about the business, I'm losing. So every time you sit down and you're talking to a friend and you don't bring up the business, go, gosh, I just lost again. Does that make sense? And understand this. Some are going to say yes, and some are going to say no. That's just the nature of the beast. You know, because some of you have friends that you really want to help, and they need your help. A group of guys were up here talking to me about a guy, and I was reading a text message, right? Some people in life, folks, are lying on a nail. They're like a dog lying on a nail. Interesting story. A young man moves into a neighborhood. He's going around meeting all of his wonderful neighbors. As he comes down the end of the street, he notices an old gentleman on the porch in a rocking chair, rocking back and forth, back and forth. As he gets closer, he hears this low groom move. Ooh, ooh. He's like, what in the world is that? Well, as he gets to the gate, he notices lying beside the old fellow as a dog. And he, he, he greets him, sir, sir, I'm new to the neighborhood. How are you doing? Tells him who he is. He says, oh, I'm doing great. He says, I got a question for you. He says, sure, young man, what do you need? He says, what's wrong with your dog? Lying on a nail. <laughs> well, why didn't he get up? Because it doesn't hurt bad enough. <laughs> there are people in life that are lying on the nail, and they'll tell you about the nail. They're lying on, man, I hate my job, I hate my house, I can't get enough money out of the end of the month. And then you offer them a way to get off the nail, and where they go, I'm comfortable here. <laughs> Am I right? Okay? So guess what? This is what you do to those wonderful people. I love you. I wish you the very best. It's just not the program I'm on. See, because six months from now, a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, guess what they'll still be doing? Lying on that nail. nail. <laughs> Telling the same story. And you will have moved on. Does that make sense? Some of them will say no to you today, and then three, six months down the road when things are changing for you, they go, well, why didn't you tell me about it? Dude, you were busy lying on your nail. <laughs> you didn't want to hear it. I tried. <laughs> but guess what? Now it may be the time in their life that they're ready to get off the nail. And so you say, come on, let me show you how I did it. And you bring them along for the journey. Does that make sense? Because getting involved in network marketing is all about timing in the life of the individual. Notice what I said. It's all about timing in the life of the individual. So it's not about me. It's about who? Them. Them. Because we're in the what business? People business. People business. Does that make sense? So make sure it's not never about you. It's always about them. How can I help them? You know what? Some people just can't be helped at the moment. That nail is comfortable. See, they said that people, you and I are afraid of one thing. And that's when we're born. It's falling from loud noises. Falling from high places. Those are the things we're afraid of. So all these other fears that we get along the way are learned. So if I can learn a fear, can I unlearn it? Yes. Sure. Absolutely. Does that make sense? And so understand that people's belief systems are what dictate what they will become and what they do. But most of their belief system is something that they've learned throughout their life. Does that make sense? And so if your belief system is not getting you where you want to go, 
then you need to address it. And you need to ask yourself, is this moving me towards or away from my goal? If it's moving you away from your goal, reevaluate it and come up with a new one. Does that make sense? Because that's the only way it happens. And what we call that process is we call it progress. You see, all of us have a goal and a destination that we want to achieve in this business. But it's not the goal or the destination that really matters. It's what we become in the process. Does that make sense? So it's the journey that's going to create the end result. Because at the end of the day, you're going to be different than who you are today. It can only happen that way. See, I can't get to a million dollars and still be the same guy. Does that make sense? You hear them talk about the millionaire psychology, how people, how millionaires or rich people see money. And see, if I don't see money the same way they do, guess what? The money will flee from me. Because I won't be a good steward. Does that make sense? You see, that's why when people win the lottery, within five years they're broke. Why? Because they're who they are. Money never came to them in the past. They just hit the jackpot, got lucky. But they're not a good steward. So guess what? Money flees. It goes away. And before they know it, they go, where'd all the money go? Does that make sense? It was because they didn't progress. They didn't learn. They didn't grow. They didn't develop so that they could become a good steward of money and that they became a money magnet. That money came to them. And it's not by mistake, guys, that I've made it to the top of every company that I've been in. And what I'm sharing with you today are those golden nuggets that if you'll take and you'll internalize it and you'll go out and you'll study and read about it, it will transform not only your business, but it will transform your life. And it will allow you to create the life that you desire and that you deserve to live. Because you have the power to do that. See, as a leader, all I can do is lead you back to you. Because you hold the answers. I don't. I can tell you my path. I can tell you what I know works. But unless you implement it, unless you do it, unless you experience it, it's nothing more than a guy standing in front of you talking. Does that make sense? The last piece of the puzzle, step number three, is becoming a leader. How many of you sponsor at least one person? Guess what we now call you? The leader. You've got one follower. Does that make sense? You've got one follower, so guess what you need to do with that follower? Teach them what you know. Does that make sense? Help them. Teach them what you know. And what do you know? Well, I know how to sponsor someone. How do I know I know how to sponsor someone? Because I'm a leader. <laughs> Does that make sense? You may not know much, but you know more than they do. Does that make sense? So now that means that you have to begin to learn and grow because they're depending on you to show them the way. So I'm going to recommend a book. Mandy talked about a 120-page book. This one, guys, is probably about 24 pages. It's called As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. And at the end of that book, the question I want you to ask yourself is this. What am I planting in my garden? And your garden is your mind. Because whatever you plant there, I promise you, it will take root and it will manifest itself in your life. So, if you look at your life, you can say, okay, what's shown up is what I planted. Now, some of us may have planted some weeds there. But the different great thing is we can pull the weeds out. Because guess who's the weeder? You are that no matter what happens or what you're doing, it's always wrong for them. These are the people that call up 
and say, I thought the company was going to send me a blue binder, mine's red. Right? <laughs> Give you an example. I was in a nutritional company. And this lady stands up, and I was teaching this person. She says, you know, I have a lady in my downline, and she just called me yesterday because the last pill in her bottle was broken. <laughs> and she wanted to know if the company would give her her money back. Okay? Avoid these people like the plague. <laughs> Here's what you do to those wonderful folks. You say, man, this may not work out for you, but i got a company that I can recommend for you. And send them somewhere else. <laughs> Here's the challenge, though, guys. Here's the challenge. Guess what? We spend most of our time with this group. That's the sad part about it. And the reason is, is you and I were led to believe something when we were kids. The squeaky wheel always gets the grease. The grease. So when that person's going, I need some money, help me. Right? They're squeaking. Guess what we're trying to do? Oh, oh, okay. And we're calling, can you so-and-so call them? This is what's going on. And can we help them? Right? And we're spending all our time down here. And let me tell you, get this, understand this. Okay? They will never build the business. So is that an effective use of your time? No. See, I have a principle you want to live by. That principle is this. Spend time with people that deserve your time, not need your time. <clears throat> Let me repeat that. Spend time with people that deserve your time, not need your time. Okay? So avoid the living dead. The next group, notice this is the largest group. This group is called the followers. And I'll say this. Wake Up Now as a company, okay, is built to help this group right here. Who are these followers? They're people that got involved in business. They're excited about the business. They show up to all the meetings. They just never bring anybody. Because they want to hang out with the community. They want to be a part of the group. They're groupies. <laughs> okay? But guess what? If you could just carve off 5% of those groupies and get them to make money, guess what? They will create a revolution. Because they've never made it before. Does that make sense? Wake Up Now is working at this group right here. And all we want is to get, change the numbers by 5%. If we change the numbers by 5%, folks, we will create a revolution. <clears throat> and it will be a wake up now revolution. Of people that have tried it over and over again, that have been groupies, and now for the first time, they're making money. And you know what they're going to do then? <clears throat> they're going to scream it from the housetops. Because they're winning. Does that make sense? Now, in your organizations, guys, you want to make sure that you make a space for these people. Because notice, this is the largest part of your organization. Okay? You want to make a place. You want to make them feel at home. So if there's, but here's what happens to most of these people and why they're in that group. They want to be a part of the community. They want to participate. But they're not successful because... They are not willing to do this one word, and that is change. You see, when prime time comes, they're watching ABC, NBC, and CBS. DVR, there you go. Here's the difference, folks. If you give me two hours of prime time a day, two hours of prime time a day, you can change your financial future. Now let me ask you guys this. Maybe you guys know. When was the last time ABC, NBC, CBS, ESPN, any of those put a check in the mail and said, thanks for watching? <laughs> Does that ever happen to anybody? No. Oh, okay. I just wanted to make sure I was still on the right country, you know, the right program. <laughs> so guess what? 
Make a commitment to yourself to give your business two to three hours of prime time a day. So that means there's no more watching Scandal, there's no more watching... What's some of the other ones out there? Huh? Revenge. Revenge. What are some other ones? Family Guy. Huh? Family Guy. Family Guy. What's that? <laughs> How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, okay. You guys, you, okay? I don't even have cable in my house, so I'm trying to figure it all out, right? But understand, if you'll do that, you can change your life in prime time. Let's see how many are committed to do it. Because it, the results will show up. And six months down the road, guess what? We'll know who did and who didn't. Because the results will show up. It's just that simple. Five percenters are people what I call leader managers. These are people in your organization, guys. That you know what? You can give them an assignment and say, hey, we're doing a meeting. I need you to make sure we got this, this, and this at the meeting. And they'll do it, and they'll do it well. When you give them an assignment, you never have to worry about them because you know it's going to get taken care of. Does that make sense? The only challenge that group has is they will not act unless you give them instructions to act. So they are great leaders, but guess what? They sit and they wait for you to say, go do this. And they'll go do it and they'll go do it well. Now the guys at the top, the three percenters, here's a principle you want to always remember about leaders. Leaders always, always initiate action. Never fails. If the meeting's supposed to start at 7.30 and you're not there, guess what? When you get there at 7.45, the meeting's already started. Why? Because the leader stepped up and took over. Mm-hmm. Leader's the person that you get them in the business, the next day they're on the phone and say, hey, I went through the website, I went through the back office, I got a couple of questions for you. Early on in my career, I'd do this. Because I wanted to find out who the leaders were, right? Because I'm <laughs> looking for leaders. That little book I just recommended to you, I'd recommend them read that book, or I had them go out and get a book called The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho, which is a great read if you haven't read it. It's called The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. He's a Brazilian guy. Great book. No, I'm most. Okay? This is what I do. Hey, man, go pick the book up. Two weeks, what I'd like to do is get together and talk to you how that applies to the business. In two weeks, one or two things is going to happen. Either they will have read the book, or they will have excuses why they didn't read the book. Does that make sense? And what do leaders always do? Initiate action. So guess what they will have done? They will have read the book. And it's never failed. So what about the guy that made this excuses? Well, I can't kick him out of the business, but guess what? I say, hey, you know what? It's okay. I understand things get in the way. Here, here's my card. Here's my number. I'm willing to help you. Please give me a call when you need help. But you know what? I rest assured it's going to happen. He's never going to call. <clears throat> Why? Because leaders initiate action, folks. And it's just that simple. And that's what you're looking for in this business, is you're looking for leaders. And you get to develop leaders. And we're going to have some leadership training. We're going to talk about principles of leadership and how you lead people and what you need to become in order to be a leader. But to give you some food for thought on what you need to become to become a leader, write this question down. What does the ideal prospect or downline member look like to me? What are their characteristics? What do they look like? What do you think that you want them to bring to the table? (coughs) 
Next question. What is that ideal prospect or downline member going to expect from me as their sponsor and upline? And number three, what is it that I lack on that list? Now that tells you what you need to go to work on. See, we have to become that which we desire. Does that make sense? I think it was Gandhi that said, <coughs> become the good that you desire in the world. Be the, something, be the change that you desire in the world, something that affects, right? So guess what? If I'm wanting those type of people in my organization, then I have to be the type of leader that would attract those type of people into my organization. See, I can't be a bum and expect Michael Jordan to come <coughs> and play basketball with me. It just doesn't happen. Does that make sense? Because I'm not attracted to Michael. Does that make sense? But in order to get him, I've got to become attractive. Are there organizations out there that are attractive to Michael Jordan. Absolutely. They sign him every day. And he signs a contract with him every day. Does that make sense? So it's about attracting it. And in order to attract it, we have to become attractive. We have to become that which we desire to receive. We have to become prepared for it. There's a saying, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Right? So I, I reverse that. When the sponsor is ready, the downline appears. So you have to be ready as a sponsor, and then they show up. That makes sense? I'm going to end then with a little story. Okay? There was a farmyard out in the country where there lived a group of chickens. Every day the farmer would come out early in the morning, and he'd show out the chicken feed, and the corn and the chickens would come out, and they would begin to eat. One particular morning, they were out eating, and there was a shadow that came across the barnyard, and they were like, whoa. And they looked up, and they held, beheld a big, bald eagle. And all those chickens watched that eagle soar across, and watched and watched, and they watched, and he went and landed up on a mountain. And then they talked about the spectacle of seeing the eagle. And one of those little chickens said, you know what? I want to fly like that eagle. And all the other chickens said, well, chickens can't fly. I said, well, I just wonder what it would be like to be like him. It's never going to happen because chickens can't fly. Well, this little chicken, when nightfall came, you know, they had watched that old eagle and where he perched himself. So while everybody else was sleeping, he slipped out. And he slipped out, and he made his way up the mountain, and he found that tree where that big old eagle was perched, sound asleep. And he looked up, and he said, Mr. Eagle! Mr. Eagle! And eventually he rustled that old eagle out of his slumber. Who is it? It's me, Mr. Chicken! What do you want, Chicken? I want you to teach me how to fly. Chickens can't fly. Go back to the barnyard. I'm not leaving. <laughs> Mr. Eagle, I want you to teach me how to fly. Chickens can't fly. Well, he just kept badgering that old eagle to the eagle. He said, okay. He swoops down and he grabs that chicken in his big paws. And he takes him up to the highest branch of that tree. He says, okay, this is how you fly. You flap your wings. You let the wind get under your wings and you get, begin to soar. But you got to flap. And that old chicken was a flapping and a flapping and a flapping. And while he was a flapping, that eagle gave him a push. <laughs> and he went, ah! He went straight down. That old eagle swooped down and picked him up before he hit the ground. He says, oh, this is going to be tough. So he says, okay, let's do this. So he kept him on the ground. He says, okay, I want you to flap your wings. I want you to run. I want you to jump. And the old chicken did it for most of the night. So then the eagle said, okay, I'm going to take him. And he took him back up to that top branch. And he said, okay, now flap your wings. He flapped his wings and he gave him a push. And miraculously, 
after diving for a bit, that old, the wind caught hold, and that old chicken began to fly. And the sun began to come out over the mountain, and that old chicken flew all the way down back to the chicken pen and landed right in the middle of all of his friends. And they were like, oh, that was cool. Dude, what did you do? The eagle taught me how to fly. They said, will you teach us? Will you teach us? And he said, sure. So he took them all back to the top of the mountain where the eagle taught him. And they worked hard all day. By the end of the day, those chickens could fly. As the sun began to set, they landed back on the mountain, and they all walked home. <laughs> Did you get it? Did you get it? You got a lot of good information here. Use it. Because you deserve to soar with the eagles. You have it in you to be the best you that you can be. And by you being the best you that you can be, you'll change the life of those around you. Thank you for coming. Because you could have been anywhere today, but you chose to be here. And that says a lot about you and your commitment. See, what most people don't realize is there's an important principle in network marketing. And I call it the principle of showing up. See, being where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there. I had the privilege of speaking on the stage with Jim Rowan on many occasions. But what I really liked about Jim was Jim was the ultimate learner. After Jim would speak and he would go and sign autographs and sell his books and his tapes and his DVDs and CDs. You'd see him in the back of the room with his notebook open, taking notes. Here was a guy that spent most of his life teaching others about personal development, their development and being their best you that they could be. And there he was in the back. And I had a chance to talk to him and ask him why. You know what he said? He said, Mike, I never know when my moment's going to come. What do you mean? You see, you can come to trainings like this over and over again. You're going to hear a lot of the same stuff. But there's going to come a time that someone's going to say something that resonates with you and who you are. And it's going to put you on a different path that will change the rest of your life. But if you don't show up, you miss your moment. See, that moment happened for me at the very first convention I went to as a network marketer. And one of my mentors, Robert G. Allen, was on stage talking, and I was sitting next to a buddy of mine. And Robert was talking, and I can't even tell you what he was talking about. But at that moment, he was talking about being the best Jew or something of that nature. <coughs> and something clicked for me and said, you deserve to be on that stage. And I looked at my buddy and I said, Dan, I said, next year I'm going to be on that stage. And he looked at me and he went, drive. <laughs> we just got started, right? I was really a nobody. A year to the date, a week before that convention, I got a call from Dallin Larson, then Network Market Development, my VP of that company. And he said, Mike, you're one of our newest goal directors. And word on the street is that you're an up-and-coming superstar. I'd like to invite you to speak to the USANA family. Will you speak at our convention? And there was over 5,000 people in the audience that day I spoke. But a year to the date, I was in the right place at that moment. And my moment came. And it changed my life. So showing up is a major part of this business. So when there's an opportunity to get to a meeting or get to a convention or get to a conference or whatever it happens to be, make sure that you're there. Because you never know when your moment's going to come. And I'm thankful for Jim for teaching me that lesson. Because there he was in the back of the room with his notebook open, taking notes, waiting for his next moment. Because he's had a lot, and many of you have had a lot in your life where you've been somewhere and that moment came for you and it changed the course of your life. 
And as Jim would say, he says, that's the greatest thing that you can do for yourself and for your friends. And the greatest thing is, he says, is to have your name mentioned in someone's testimonial. They say, I was here in 1995 at Starbucks Coffee Shop with a friend. And we were talking, and he shared a book with me that changed the course of my life. And then they mention your name. Because now you will have made a difference. And that's what I talk about when I talk about your authentic self showing up. Because there are people around you that need you to show up. So that you can share with them the things that will change their life. But I've always found it the other way as well. In the process, your life changes.